Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my home and I uh, hope you're sitting comfortably as we get into uh, this talk this morning. This is the last in our series, Turn Your Eyes. We're finishing off having gone through Lent and Easter uh, and this is the last one. But before we get too far in, I think we should probably address the elephant in the room or to drop the metaphor, the hat on the head. Now, I love hats. In fact, I kind of wish I'd lived in an era where people wore hats more. I'd love to kind of walk out of the house and put a trilby on every day, but that isn't the era uh, we live in. I love the old advert that says, if you want to get a head, get a hat. You get it? A head, a head, get a hat. Okay. But it's actually not why I'm wearing the hat today. I'm wearing the hat because I want to ask you a question about belief. If someone was to come to you and say, we saw David earlier this week and he buzz cut his hair down to the same stubble as his beard, pretty much shaved it off, would you believe me? That thick Tintin-esque mop of hair gone. Would you believe that? Would you believe that person if they said that to you? Let us know now in the chat, here or here. So let us turn now to the Bible. We're reading today from John 20 and starting at verse 24. And then we'll say a few things about it. And there's just one point I really want to draw out for us today. Here it is, John 20, 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, which is his Greek nickname because he had a small moustache, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciple told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Then Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you've believed. But blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. This is the word of the Lord. I want to note just three little things uh, on the from the off as a kind of way of shaping how we view the passage, but then dive into really a big point that's there for us. The first is that Thomas is just like the others. So the story right before this is Jesus coming through the locked door and appearing to the other disciples. So they believed because they'd seen him. It's also fair to say that Thomas wanted to believe. That's what it feels like in the passage to me. It's not that he just thought, oh, this is a load of cobblers. He wanted to believe. He was saying, unless I'm able to do that, I just can't believe. It's too hard. Unless I see him, I'm able to touch the wounds. And I think we get a hint of that is when he does see Jesus and Jesus speaks to him, he says, my Lord, my God, you know, it's released from him. All that overwhelming sense of I wanted it to be true. It just felt too hard. This challenge here, of course, from Jesus, and that's clear. But it's also gracious. I think you could read this as Jesus having a paw pattern, but that's not actually that consistent with how Jesus has been with all of them or anyone for that matter throughout his time in the previous three years of ministry. It's almost like what he's saying is, actually, you struggle to believe. So here I am being gracious enough to give you what you need to bridge the gap of belief. So hopefully that sort of shapes the passage for us. But I think the real deep challenge here is from verse 28. 
challenge to Thomas, to all of the disciples, when he says, you have seen and therefore believe. The blessed are those who come along who will not have seen any of what you have. I think Jesus is hinting at something deeper. His hope was that they would have believed anyway. Why? Because they'd seen so much. Because they'd been with him for so many years and seen all of this stuff. It's a call in a way from Jesus to say, remember. What I wanted from you was to remember. And what I want from you now, as you go from here, is to remember this moment and every moment before. Remember what you've seen. You see, you know, the disciples could look back and and say, you know, we saw the crowds mesmerised by this Jesus. We saw him teach in a way that went beyond what you did, right to the attitude of the heart. We saw him moved with compassion again and again, welcoming children, elevating those who were on the edge. We saw him feed 5,000 homes with one packed lunch. We saw people queuing down the street to see him and every one of them going home healed. We saw him kill a raging storm Dead with just two words. And we watched a man who had passed away four days ago walk out of a grave. The call from Jesus was to remember all of that that they'd seen. That was his hope. Actually, all of that that they'd seen would have been enough. But the call going forward is the same. a call for us too, to believe. Having seen all of this, to believe. So at this point, let's go back to the hat. Do you believe? I mean, do you believe if somebody was to come and say he shaved it all off? Would you believe? Some of you who are uh, tuning in today will not know me very well. And you'll think, goodness, I don't know, seems pretty crazy. But who knows? Some of you will know me a little bit, but better. And you'll think, I don't know, it's a kind of nuts thing he would do, perhaps. A little bit crazy. Thing is, though, if you went and asked my colleagues at school, the school where I work, if I would do that to make a point in a talk, they would have had no doubt whatsoever. Because they'd have looked back and said to themselves, we saw him dive off a stage once, remember that? Remember the time when he delivered an entire assembly with a pair of women's tights over his head? Goodness, he came to an interview, remember, with a pig's tongue, a bloodied pig's tongue in a box. And they'd say to themselves, has he shaved his head off to make a point in this talk? Yes, he has. And of course, they would be right. It's gone. So did you believe? My colleagues, they remembered. Or they would have remembered, I think, had we asked them. The call to Thomas and the rest of the group, and the call that echoes down in history to us, is to remember all we have seen of him. If we're people who have journeyed with God, to remember all we've seen. Maybe you're watching this morning, tuning into this, and you feel like you don't have a story of God. I pray that maybe as you look back over your life, you see moments where he has been there, but also that your experience even today and in the future would be that you see things. I can tell Uh, so many stories uh, through the years. I can tell of God's greatness um, with me. Times when he was great, when the circumstances seemed to overwhelm me. And yeah, the hope started to rise in me. An uncanny peace descended on me. I saw healing and wholeness in my life and those around me. 
I can think of times and tell stories when God was glorious to me, when his presence felt as if it was right there. When there was that sense of being overwhelmed by a love that is fathomless. I could tell stories of when God has been good to me with little things and with huge gifts. I could tell those kind of stories. And times too, I can think of when I messed up and he was so gracious with me. He was so gracious. He let me start again. He let me save face. This is who God is. And this is my story of him. What are your stories? Can you remember them? Have a think now. What are your God stories? What are the stories in your life where you think, hmm, something was happening there? A God breaking in. A God who is great and glorious, good, gracious. Remember your stories. We as a family are going to remember the last uh, few weeks quite well. Um, for little touches we've seen uh, from God. About a week and a half ago, Caroline's uh, grandfather passed away. He was a hundred. And uh, he'd uh, fallen and uh, smashed his hip and they'd done some palliative surgery. Uh, and actually he was kind of recovering quite well from that. But in the end, he was worn out. His whole body was worn out. Uh, and he passed on. But in the times, in these last few weeks of his life, we just saw such grace and goodness from God. Caroline's mum, granddad's daughter, was away on holiday in New Zealand. For five, six weeks at the start of this year. And he was perfectly well through the whole of that time. There was nothing for her to worry about on the other side of the globe. He was fine. When she came back and he'd fallen, she was able to go and see him. We were able to go and see him. I remember we had a lovely time when we went in and um, just, it, just enjoyed a bit of time with him. It was sweet. It was just one of those sweet moments where you thought we've connected with him again. There were laughs. There was moments of poignancy. It was sweet. It was a really nice time. And then in the end, when he was in distress a little bit and calling out to Jesus for help, I mean, literally calling out for help, and, a, and peace came on him. And he was still again. And Caroline's mum uh Skyping him those last few days and having some lovely moments with him, singing hymns to him, reading the Bible to him, and the carers around just being really struck by what was going on there for Caroline's mum and for Grandad as well. And then there was the day a week and a half back where my daughter was doing her praying for people. She has some stones with names written on them and she picks, picks out two stones every day. One of them is for you to pray for as the parent helping her and one of them is for her to pray for. And by chance, or not, but by, you know, by chance, uh, it seemed she picked out for her great-granddad, great-granddad's stone. And she prayed in silence for him and then said she felt she'd caught something for God. And the thing she caught is she wanted to write Jesus on the other side. Because he, putting them together, putting Jesus and great granddad together. We seemed like a lovely thing and we kind of let her do it. And then we woke the next morning to the news that he passed away that very night in his sleep. Have you got stories like this? Ordinary day to day stories. I mean, we could write them off. We could write them off as being nothing. We could say this is just chance. Or we could remember them for what they are. Which is stories where we saw God's greatness with us. Him being glorious with us. So good to us. So gracious with us. At a time where we really needed
Folks, today may you turn your eyes to all you have seen and remember. May you see stuff even today and tomorrow and every day that follows now. And remember. And may your heart be encouraged and your faith enlivened by what you have seen. Folks, it's been nice talking to you this morning and I'm going to put my hat back on because, to be honest with you, I'm feeling a little cold. Have a great day.